go. Welcome back. Today we're talking about flashlights and what to do when the power goes out. Both of my kids have a lantern that we bought them. These are LED lights inside of here. They hold four AAA batteries. You just turn them on. Kristen was lucky enough to get one where the top of it glows in the dark. That way whenever she turns it off, she'll be able to see it a little while later. Corey, we didn't mean it this way, <laughs> but we, did, we, didn't get, we didn't realize that this one was glow in the dark whenever we bought them. And so Corey got one that didn't glow. But, oh well, sorry Corey. Okay, now I'm going to suggest two things that you should not use under certain circumstances. One is a type of Coleman lantern. This is a Coleman North Star. This thing just There we go. Do not recommend that this kind of item be used inside the house after the power goes out. I do recommend that you get one with an electric start and not one that you have to light a match and hold it up in there and light it. The reason why I say I do not recommend this type of lantern is because they get extremely hot on the top of it. Just from having it on those few seconds, you set your hand on here, it's going to burn you. If you leave it on for 30, 45 minutes, you can get very easily get second, maybe third degree burns from setting your hand up here. Now with adults, that's no big deal. You should know. Keep your hands off of it. But if you have children around, try to avoid using this type of lantern. The other type of lantern is a kerosene lantern. If you use these, keep them away from where the children can knock them over. This is literally a bomb, Molotov cocktail full of kerosene. You have these on the on the, on the edge of a table. Sure enough, one of the kids is going to come by and knock it over. It's going to catch your house on fire. If you use these, set them up high. Set them up above head level where they cannot get knocked over. Knocked over, like on top of a bookshelf, on a dresser. If you have to use one, set it off, set it like on a countertop, move it all the way against close to the wall, but not so close to the wall it's going to catch an old fist. It's not going to put any heat on the wall. These can be very, very dangerous around small children. Keep them away from walkways. Cheap plastic flashlights. Do not waste your money. Do not waste your time. They're junk. Don't mess with them. This is a mag light, 3CLD. Not only is it good for a flashlight, but I'm going to give you a little tip. Never carry a flashlight like this. Never carry it down where it's in the palm of your hand. Always carry a flashlight like this. And as you're looking around, let's say you hear something outside. You go outside, you have your flashlight in the palm of your hand like this, you're shining it around. If it's a burglar or a prowler, it's hard to defend yourself with a flashlight in this position. Always carry your flashlight up like this. If you see a prowler or a burglar, you hear something outside, a barking dog, if you're walking around your yard at night and hear something outside, you have your flashlight like this and you're shining around. If somebody comes after you, you can hit them in the head. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. See, get yourself one. Sometimes Lowe's puts these four, five, six cell D mag light flashlights on sale. Pick up a couple of them. These make really good home defense weapons. Weapons, is that a good term? Really good for home defense. You hear something outside, it's less lethal than a firearm. Remember, always carry it like that. If something comes at you, even if it's a dog, you're standing up. You can hit the dog on top of the head and he's going to think twice about biting you. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Okay. Now, LED flashlights are the way to go. Something like 10 times the battery life, 
the bulb will last 100,000 hours. This is, this is the only way to go. If you're buying small flashlights, do not waste your time with the little cheap plastic junk. This is, these cost about $15 to $20. They're well, they are well worth it. In fact, I thought I had, well, anyway, I've got, here's the other one. I got two of these. For long-term power outages, hand crank flashlights should be really considered. You should already have a couple of these laying around, not just one, but say two, three, four, two for the adults, one for the children, so whenever their flashlights run out of juice, you can issue them these. This comes with a one or three LED option. One thing to consider whenever you're buying these hand crank flashlights is the handle length. That one compared to this one. The longer the handle, the easier it's going to be to crank it. This thing here is a pain. That's just there. This has only got one LED in it. But one good thing is that this LED has like a little magnifying glass in the lens. This one does not. Whenever you're looking at these LED flashlights, look at cost and look at the handle length. What, this one? We'll get to that one just a second. Hand crank radios. Very, very important. You should have at least one, maybe two of these. Go ahead and spend a little money, get you a good one. Crank, turn it on, crank it up, turn this thing on. Whenever the power goes out, you have no way of getting the news. These can be very good. As Kristen mentioned, I have here a LED Q beam. Two or three of these, at least one, for home security. After Hurricane Rita passed through here two years ago, we went two and a half weeks without electricity. I would have laughed, I would have loved to have one of these to be able to walk out if we heard something outside. Whenever, and nice to be able to walk out there and light up the whole street. And why do I say LED Q beams? Because whenever your power is out for a really long time, for weeks on end, you're going to need a way to recharge your batteries. I recommend having several of these solar walkway rechargers. You should already have a lot of these up and down your walkways in front of your house, out in your flower beds. But what a lot of people do not know is that these charge AA batteries. Put these out in your yard where they can get the most light let them charge all day. Whenever the sun starts to go down, go out there and collect them. Put a couple of these, take them off their little stake, set them in the bathroom. Perfect for children. This is, this is the safest way to go as, com as com compared to the other lanterns. Set a couple of these in the bathroom. If the kids have to get up in the middle of the night, take care of business, they've already got a couple of these sitting in the bathroom to light their way. The ones that you don't use during the night, be sure to take the batteries out or else they'll discharge overnight. Take the batteries out and the next day put them back in. You should only be using rechargeable batteries. We already have switched over. We've got a couple of these battery chargers. As your batteries start to go down, put them in here, put them in your generator. You should have an inverter in one of your vehicles, whenever you crank your, whenever you drive somewhere, if you have any gas to go anywhere, plug this into your inverter while you're driving. Let it be charging your batteries for your flashlight, your cell phone, whatever else you got. Now, entertainment after the power goes out is very important. After Hurricane Rita, we played several, several hours of Rummy Cube. Um. Yeah. Now this is where I do not recommend these type of lanterns. You need a lantern such as Corey's or Kristen's that you can set in the middle of the table 
and be ever be able, everybody be able to gather around the coffee table and play. These do not get hot. If somebody reaches over to get a card or a tile or if you're playing a board game, these are not going to burn you. This will. This Coleman lantern is extremely dangerous inside my house because of the burn factor. Or, or what? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, that's about it for now. Thank you for your time.